morning in case you haven't gathered it's uh, dad's birthday today let me just flip the camera around and show you what we've done so far got a few banners and balloons up don't think we've gone over the top <laughs> nah <laughs> definitely not Morning birthday boy. Good morning. <laughs> morning mini mum. Morning. <laughs> Just uh, getting his uh, daily exercise in. <laughs> How are you feeling today pops? I'm not feeling so bad. Just a bit drained when I say it was This is a nuisance because that's working at me all the time. Yeah. Uh, I can feel this a bit today but it's just a bit uncomfortable. Apart from that I'm a bit short of breath, we're doing okay, thanks. Yeah, good stuff. How are you, Mini Mum? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. <laughs> so I, think, I think doing the pedalling is helping a bit. Yeah? Mm, well, it's getting some circulation going and what have you, isn't it? Yeah. Although I've just realised I've caught your scruffy socks. Oh, no, they're lovely, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Setting a new trend. Incidentally, for for those of you watching this, he has actually done that himself. They're not threadbare socks. <laughs> he's uh, he's taken the elastic off the tops because he finds them a little bit too tight. You know when they dig into your skin. Yeah. So. And all socks do it now again. Yeah. Just get them slacked up ones. They do. But your feet are swollen, aren't they? They, they are feet, swollen at the moment. Can't get ordinary shoes and socks on. No, your ankles are very swollen, aren't they? No. As you can see, it's balloon central in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gone a little bit mad with the balloons. Don't know who, which damn fool's done all that. Somebody's had a lot of puff. Yeah. And then we've got the tap set up outside for our visitors that are coming, which is Jeanette's husband and Kate, Mark's son. And then I'm just going to set the stove up so that there's a little bit of heating outside. Got the stove going outside. Done a better job of lighting it than I did the first time round. If you've seen that video. Mm -hmm. Use some um, birch logs and birch kindling this time. Just with a short chimney, just so that it doesn't damage the tarp. Yeah. Got some turkey steaks cooking on the outdoor stove. Mark's got the barbecue going. Oh, my, look at that. My mum's laughing again. Look. <laughs> got the barbecue going. Birthday boy in there. We've had some of the neighbours round to wish him happy birthday. And we've eaten cake. It's all going well. So yeah, yesterday was Dad's birthday. Well, Saturday was Dad's birthday. I came home yesterday, Sunday, and it's today's Monday. It was, it was lovely in many respects because we were able to create kind of quite a nice day for him. And Mark, Jeanette's husband, came over with his son. And because of the new lockdown restrictions, he's coming over from West Yorkshire. We, cre we were able, and the weather was terrible. We were able to create an outdoor space in the backyard using one of my tarps, thankfully. And with that stove that I've got, we were able to put some heat out there, and it, it worked really well. So that was kind of nice. It, it was, a, it, you know, it worked well, and there was food and stuff. I didn't video much of that. I did a bit of the balloon blowing up and so on. I in fact, I don't think I videoed any of that. But it was, it was a, it was a lovely day. Um, poignant and painful in some respects. And I think from dad's point of view too, because it's highly likely that that will be the, the last one, um, the last birthday we have with him. And as I say, I think he felt that too. And 
it's not often one of the things I have done with my parents for the, for the last maybe 10 15 years maybe more is I've made sure that I've spent every Christmas with them because you know once once your parents get past a certain age you never know which one is going to be the last one and it felt very much like it felt similar you know there were similar feelings going on this weekend it's been quite I felt quite emotional um, a lot and as you can probably tell my voice is breaking a bit now um, and his health does seem to be deteriorating a bit um, he's still trooping he's still um, still fighting and um, but he's <clears throat> I don't know, it just seems as though there is a bit of a deterioration. Sunday, yesterday, he struggled. He he was he spent a lot of the day in bed. Uh, he was so tired and exhausted and he'd had trouble in the morning. He's got trouble getting phlegm up from his lungs, which is why he's on a drug called carbocysteine, uh, which is to help free up the mucus and so on. And But yeah, it's it seems to be getting stuck in his throat. And he's also having a bit of trouble eating. And he's got a lump here, so as well as the tumour here, he's got a lump here in his, uh, in like that crease between your jaw and your neck. And I have wondered whether that's pressing on nerves, because if you kind of, the, a lot of the nerves that come, that feed into there, that come down from the jawline, um, feed into your throat and neck. And I have wondered whether they're, whether that's pressing on the nerves, which is impacting on his ability to swallow. It seems like, um, it seems like the act of peristalsis, that, that, motion where you, you, you the tube your uh, I think it's your esophagus uh, kind of wriggles a bit and it creates like a muscular thing like a snake moving as it and it pushes food into your stomach and it seems like that's not functioning so well and so things are going into his throat and not really moving from there so he is struggling with that um, yeah that's about it for now uh, I didn't want to kind of do a chat with him over the weekend, partly because it was his birthday and I, did, I just didn't know whether it'd be too emotional. But, um, but yeah, that's where we're at at the moment.